photos on Snapchat. We are not identifying that deputy because he was never charged criminally and he kept his job at the sheriff's office. Tonight, some are asking how. <laughs> at the time, these girls were 15, 16 years old. The photos and videos started circulating on social media in the summer of 2019. In this one, you see two girls in handcuffs and a sheriff's deputy. Can I get put in the handcuffs? Here, one of the girls takes a video in a squad car. A photo from another night shows three girls cuffed together. Gretchen, who doesn't want to give her last name, says her own daughter showed her the images. I couldn't believe it. Her daughter wasn't there, but she's friends with the girls who were. Gretchen says she also saw screen grabs from Snapchats. This police officer was calling himself Papa Bear on the Snapchat. And it was clearly a picture of him that he had taken in texts that he had sent the girls. We spoke by phone to one of the girls in the photos who didn't want to be named. She says she met the deputy when she and her friends were hanging out at a parking garage and he let them sit in his car, use his handcuffs, and look up their information on his computer. She says they added each other on Snapchat, and she and Papa Bear started communicating. We also spoke to Gretchen's daughter, who didn't want to be on camera. I was just like, what is going on? This is very weird. I think they thought it was funny at first, and they didn't realize how concerning it actually was. For everyone involved, this was the night that went off the deep end. According to one of the girls and a source familiar with the sheriff's office internal investigation, it was late night, the girls had been drinking, and the deputy asked them to meet up at this closed community pool. The girls reported they went swimming in their underwear while the deputy watched. They say he helped them jump the fence, breathalyzed them for fun, and drove them home in his squad car. I just decided there's no way I can live with this and be worried that something worse could happen, that another line could be crossed because it was very inappropriate. Gretchen called the sheriff's office to report what she knew. According to this email we obtained, it was July 4th, 2019. A few weeks later, a sheriff's investigator did interviews with her and her daughter, as well as the girls involved. From then on, I really just thought that it had been taken care of. I, I didn't pursue it further. You didn't hear anything else? I never heard anything. The Internal Affairs Unit here at the Sheriff's Office consists of just one person. And when he's out, internal investigations are conducted by command staff. Fox 5 spoke to Sheriff Mike Chapman, who makes the final call on whether someone keeps their job following an investigation. He declined an on-camera interview and says he can't speak about specific cases. The young woman we talked to says three years later, she's realized how wrong this was. She tells me, obviously, he's not a very good cop, and he shouldn't be a cop. When we told her the deputy was still working, she said, it's unbelievable to me. The sheriff's office says in a statement that it takes any complaint made against a deputy seriously and all complaints are thoroughly investigated. A spokesman, spokesman points out that a recent independent study of the sheriff's office found it's providing exceptional service to residents and made no recommendation to changes to the internal investigative process. I did reach out to the deputy involved via email for comment and he referred me to the sheriff's media spokesman. He's now been with the department for five years. Rob. Lindsay Watts reporting. Lindsay, thank you. In another